Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. There's two types of power that a man can exert over other people. Everything else is like illusion and sickness. Okay? And they come as a result of conflict. Okay, so obviously power is doing God's work in the divine order, which only I'm doing. But when it comes to clashing with somebody and exerting power over someone else who's resisting you, okay, there's two types of power that uh, a man can exert. One is being a virtuous man, right, facing wicked people, okay, and because you're more virtuous than they are, you have a certain power flowing through you. Okay, virtuous in reality and not the psychological construct, mind you. The other is being a virtuous man and you're against people who aren't necessarily wicked. Okay? But they, um, they're mistaken. So you're saying, hey, you kind of mean well or you're lukewarm, but you're mistaken. Okay, when somebody tries to exert power in a way that's wrong, like the government or a serial killer or something, they're not capable of uh, exerting power because they're evil. That's why in Revelation 19, it says Christ, who in reality, not just as a concept in the Bible, is the essence of power being wielded by someone in the flesh, okay, comes back waging war with righteousness and justice, right? His soul is raging war. It's in the spiritual realm. But if you really read the story carefully, you see it's referring to me being here in the flesh and my soul in the spirit realm, okay? So those are the two forms of power. So when you see the government saying, hey, as long as we're in charge, you know, that's all that matters or something. It's it's a pyrrhic pursuit or right? it's a pyrrhic victory. There's no point in doing it because they're not exerting power. They're just being spoiled brats abusing people. And that's where you get the idea of SRA, right? Satanic ritual abuse, which is RAS scrambled. In Hebrew, Ra means evil. In Egypt, Ra meant God, which was symbolized by the sun. Okay? Now, those different cults, and they had different perspectives and arguments and da-da-da, but that was the most universal explanation for who God is because Horus isn't God. He's God's son. Set isn't God. Sekhmet isn't God. Tararet isn't God. Num isn't God. Happy isn't God. Bastet isn't God, right? Ra symbolized God by symbolizing the sun, just like in the Bible in Psalm 19 where the sun is the symbol of the Son of God and the Spirit of God inside of him. So the essence of the Son of God, in terms of the spirit he's in, is God. But in terms of his soul, his soul is him. My soul is who I really am, not my flesh. And the spirit I'm in is God's spirit, and I'm in the highest point of it. The one God put in charge of other people spiritually. So unless you understand this concept here, you don't understand the Bible at all. And unless you come into the divine order and obey God through me, you're not a Christian because you're not a follower of Christ. From the word Christos, which means the anointed one. And we know from the series I posted about Revelation that the anointed one has to be the top martial arts ever possible in the end. It's the pinnacle. It's the final conflict between good and evil. It's the building up of the spiritual order to the final point in which the king is here, which is now, and I'm the king of kings. Okay? Not the king of science or a pie-eating contest or the king of gardening, you know, the king of knitting, but the king of martial arts. The Lord is a warrior. The, the Lord is his name. Is he Conan the Barbarian, Genghis Khan, Andre the Giant? No. John Jones? No. He is a royal African falcon, morally precise, moral, mental, spiritual, romantic, powerful, okay, God that's in the embodiment of him, which is the top martial arts ever possible, which is me, which I've proven definitively in so many ways. One of them that sticks out is my legal and peaceful, um, going to be 11 years this December, top martial artist, uh, legal and peaceful challenge, outdoor sparring.